Um, Councillor Councillor Moulton. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Dobbs. Here. And Councillor Rothenberg is not present. I think she's not expected either. She has prior work commitments, which have kept her from joining us today. Uh, so uh, I do not expect Councillor Rothenberg here. Uh, this meeting is being audio and video recorded. First order of business is to elect a permanent chair for this uh, term for city services. So I, I will take nominations. Council Labarge. Yes, I nominate Stan Moulton as chair of city service. Are there any further nominations? Okay. Uh, uh, I will accept the nomination and say that I believe that uh, I have the time, the knowledge, uh, the organizational skills to uh, keep this committee running efficiently. Uh, I My leadership style is collaborative, so I want to ensure that everyone who uh, wants to be heard, uh, members of the committee, other counselors, other city officials, and particularly the public uh, are given that opportunity. And uh, I appreciate your confidence in me. So I will now close the nominations. And uh, uh, Laura, if you would uh, call the roll and uh, counselors uh, state the name of the person you prefer for chair or abstain. Um, Councillor Moulton. Councillor Moulton. Councillor Labarge. Councillor Moulton. And Councillor Dobbs. Councillor Moulton. That passes three three zero. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, next order of business is to elect the vice chair, and uh, I will nominate Council Labarge as vice chair for this term. Thank are you. there are Bye. there any are there any further nominations? Council Labarge. Yes, um, I am very privileged to take the position as a vice chair of city service. I've done this committee, which used to be social services for many, many years, and it gives me a break from that title. So yes, I will accept that nomination. Plus the yep. fact I have a lot of experience from mostly all the committees that I've been on. And I will, I will simply say uh, that uh, I appreciate your willingness to serve Council LaBarge and I will draw upon your vast experience. You are the only one of the four of us who has served on city services. So I think we will be a good partnership team. Much appreciated. Uh, Laura, uh, would you call the roll, please? And uh, state, uh, Councilor, state your preference for uh, vice chair. Um, Councilor Labarge. Councilor Labarge. Councilor Dobbs. Councilor Labarge. And Councilor Moulton. Councilor Labarge. Okay, Councilor Labarge, you are elected vice chair. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councilors. Okay, so the next uh, up is any public comment. I see no one else on the call, so I don't think we have any public comment. Uh, we have uh, minutes of two prior meetings uh, from last term. One is the last meeting of city services, December 4th, 2023. And then one was uh, 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 February 16th, 2023, that was inadvertently overlooked. And that was uh, a meeting uh, that Council Labarge was not present at. And the only business there uh, was... Uh, one referral to the city council, which I know did occur. So it's not required that uh, that you have uh, attended those meetings to approve the minutes. Uh, so Council LaBarge, did the minutes of December, the December 4th meeting seem fine to you? Yes. I okay. Both of the minutes, February 16th, okay. 2023 and December 4th, 2023, I moved to approve those minutes. Is there I a second, second? That. Okay. I second that? Thank you. Uh, uh, Laura, call the roll, please. On We'll take these as a group on approving the uh, February 16th and December 4th, 2023 meeting. Uh, mini, minute, meeting minutes. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Councillor Dobbs. Uh, yes, I approve. Councillor Moulton. 
Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Yes. Okay, that is approved <clears throat> unanimously. Thank you. All right, so we have uh, one referral that we're taking up today. Uh, that was the referral of uh, three candidates for city boards uh, and commissions. In this case, uh, it is uh, David Ames for the Parks and Recreation Commission and Jennifer Collins and Kit Pedraza for the Arts Council. Those were referred to us uh, on uh, uh, the uh, January 4th meeting. Uh, and just by way of, uh, of background, uh, and Councilor Labarge, you can fill in uh, anything I miss. Uh, there are multiple uh, avenues uh, for pre presenting information to the to the city services committee about candidates for appointments. One, of course, is the the application form that they fill out themselves, and that was uh, part of the uh, referral uh, to the from the full council. So you should have their applications. Uh, traditionally, uh, in recent time, the city services committee has assigned uh, a member to interview uh, each candidate at a time that is mutually convenient for that member of the committee as well as the applicant and um, to report back to the committee on uh, the, uh, the basis of those individual interviews. One of the uh, one of the things that uh, we will uh, take up, and there's an item on the agenda uh, on this, is uh, the the implementation of recommendations from the Barriers to Service Committee, the report that was issued last year, mm -hmm. uh, which is very important. And uh, some work was done by the prior City Services Committee last last term, and uh, one of the uh, improvements, I believe, is uh, an establishment of a, a list of questions. Um, and you'll find that under the next agenda item uh, that was attached to, uh, to the, the agenda for, uh, for this meeting. Um, so you can use those, uh, use those questions as a starter, but you're not limited to those questions. And it ensures that you know, every candidate, every applicant who's being interviewed by us is asked roughly the same for the same information. Yes, Councilor Labarge. Yes, um, you're correct about that, Councilor Moulton. Um, we spent a lengthy time on that. A lengthy time of designing the questions we felt that was important. And yes, you can go beyond that because they might have other thoughts that are important that you would go ahead and write that down, whatever, whatever. A lot of the residents that I've talked to throughout the years, we used to come in person and it made it very difficult for ones that worked and they had to come home with their children and get ready for this meeting to come in. So we had done Zooming for quite a while for quite a while. And they were very, very pleased with that. So these questions that have been designed are extremely helpful, extremely helpful. So I thought I'd add that on. Thank you, Council LaBarge. Yeah. Um, so as, as Council LaBarge said, you know, in, in virtually any interview that you, you do, there will be um, uh, questions or uh, 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 ideas that arise during the interview that may that may merit you know further discussion. So feel free to uh, you know to take the interview in whatever direction it goes that seems productive. In what we're trying to do is make sure that there's a a good fit That's right. between the applicant and the position that he or she or they are being considered for. So that's what we're looking for. And then the uh, the committee members who do those interviews will report back to the full city services committee at our next at our next meeting. 
Uh, another uh, another avenue for uh, receiving information about candidates that uh, the, the city services committee last term developed is reaching out. And again, this is a recommendation from the uh, the the, uh, the barriers uh, special committee on uh, reducing barriers to service it is to contact the the chairs and vice chairs of the particular board or commission that the applicant is being considered for in, a, in, in an effort to get their input if they wish to provide any about the particular candidate. And that that really started toward the end of the last term. And uh, Laura uh, has reached out in this case to both uh, uh, the Parks and Recreation Commission and the Arts Council. And in fact, we've received some feedback already from Brian Foote and that will be made available to the full city services committee at our next meeting when we actually uh, consider recommendations on these candidates. And then of course, anyone could come to the meeting and uh, express an opinion about a particular candidate yeah. uh, if they wish to. So th there's, there's kind of a wide array of opportunities for us to, um, get to know the candidates and evaluate the fit for the particular positions. Any any questions or comments or observations? Okay. The, yes, Council of I Art. have to say the many, many people throughout the city that I have interviewed, I didn't go through quickly. I spent a lengthy time talking with them and they were very very pleased with that total communication and there's a lot of value there very good that's very good so uh i think that uh a committee members should uh uh should interview candidates uh based on um if anybody is particularly interested in uh the arts council uh, or parks and rec based on, you know, the, the, the particular board or commission that the candidates being considered for. The other thing is to interview candidates in your, in your ward. We're all ward counselors. So it would make sense, uh, uh, in that to that also to, uh, to choose who interviews, which candidates based on where they, which ward they live in. In this case, uh, none of the candidates are in either ward six or uh, or four. So let me ask uh, uh, first, Council Labarge, do you have a preference for these these three candidates? Which one you'd like to interview? Yeah, I would like to interview um, David Ames. David Ames. Yep. Okay. Brown Hill Road, Parks yep. and Recreation. Okay. I'm going to ask uh, Councillor Rothenberg to uh, interview Kit uh, Pradaza if if, uh, if if Councillor Rothenberg is able to do that, uh, and because Kit lives in Ward Three. So, uh, Councillor Dubs, are you are you willing to uh, interview Jennifer Pollins for yes, the I'd be, okay. I'd be happy to do that. Yep. And my suggestion is, you 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 have. On the uh, on the application, you've got a phone number for the candidate, so you can uh, make the call and uh, uh, set up either just a phone interview or Zoom interview if you prefer uh, sometime before our next meeting. Okay. Okay, that, sounds great. Does that make sense to, to yes, everybody? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Uh. All right. Councilor Moulton, did you say you were going to interview, ask Quaverly to interview Kip Pedraza? I'm going to ask Councilor Rothenberg to interview okay. Kip Pedraza because in Kip Ward lives three. in Ward 3. If Councilor Rothenberg is unable to do that, I will do I will do the interview. Okay. 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 So those uh, will come back to us at our regular February meeting, which we'll discuss uh, in a few minutes. So we're going to interview them now for the um, next meeting. We present them. Yes, correct, own. correct. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, 
Uh, next item on the agenda is an update on the status of implementation of the Barriers to Service Select Committee uh, final report recommendations. I asked uh, Laura to put on the, uh, to attach to the agenda, the report, uh, which was made last year, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the standard question list that was developed, and then uh, a matrix uh, that I believe, Laura, you you came up with this, correct? I did. And I I, I think the matrix is very valuable uh, in terms of looking at the specific recommendations uh, of the barriers committee that apply to um, uh, to the application process that we're involved with and figuring out how to implement those recommendations. Some have, you know, some have been relatively easy to do, including the, the uh, creation of the standard questions, as well as reaching out to chairs and vice chairs. But beyond that, um, there are important recommendations, as as you know, if you've read the report, uh, there's a lot of concern expressed about the, the process for applying for, these are volunteer positions on boards and, and commissions, was seen as opaque, not very efficient, and generally not very friendly to the applicants. And we want to we want to fix that. Uh, so I think that's one of our that's going to be one of our chief tasks over the next uh, several months. And uh, I feel this is very important. I, I first got involved with uh, understanding the uh, concerns about barriers to service five years ago when I chaired the Charter Review uh, uh, Commission in Northampton. And while this wasn't a charter matter, it was a recommendation from that committee to the city council that this this uh, select committee be set up, which and it was two years ago. And I think their report is very valuable. So I'm committed to looking at how we can um, work with the mayor's office to further the recommendations and uh, knock down some of these barriers and get people involved in municipal government who traditionally have been underserved and uninvolved. So I ask that this be put on the agenda today simply to make sure that uh, particularly the new members um, are up to speed on the report and where we stand with it. So I, I think that uh, we'll, we'll schedule it for discussion probably at our next meeting in February and, uh, and, uh, and then figure out how we can proceed uh, with uh, uh, with some take some steps to uh, uh, to really uh, look at how those recommendations can be uh, uh, can be put into practice. Yes, Laura. Just a note: I realized that I had meant to on page two is the um, recommendation that vice chairs and chairs should be notified, and I'd meant to update that with the status update or to indicate that they are now being notified so I can do that um, for the next meeting. Yep. Very you, good. Laura. Very good, Laura. Thank you. Any any questions or comments or other observations about the uh, um, the select committee's report on, on barriers and how it might apply to us? Okay. Uh, so the uh, the only other uh, agenda item today is uh, we want to set a schedule and a format for meetings uh, for this term. And I mean, we set a schedule for the two years. It's not set in stone, however, so that if, you know, there may be uh, a city services uh, generally doesn't have a lot of special meetings, but there may be a time when we, we would have to schedule special meetings. Um, we know that uh, based on the traditional scheduling of city services that at least uh, in September, it conflicts with Labor Day. Um, so we, uh, you know, we have to be mindful of any other holidays that our meetings conflict with. I, I will say that uh, 
uh, we've set up a calendar. Laura has established a calendar that is based on uh, the immediate past practice of having city services meet on the first Monday of the month. Um, there are four standing committees. Three of them meet on Mondays. Finance committee, uh, which last term was the first term that it was sort of unbundled from the full council, taken out of the full council meetings, meets on Wednesdays. Um, so for scheduling purposes, obviously we want to avoid conflicts with the council committees. We want to try to stay away from from you know avoiding conflicts with any of the other boards uh, that 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 you, uh, Councilor Labarge, or you, Councilor Dubs, may serve on. Councilor Dubs, you're a member of the Dis Disability Commission. So, for simplicity, um, and uh, we'll note that at uh, 420, uh, Councilor Rothenberg has joined us. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, for simplicity, um, we assumed that uh, we would continue to meet on the first Monday of the month, and that avoids conflicts with the other two council committees that meet on also on Mondays. Uh, the uh, Legislative Matters, second Monday, Community Resources, third Monday. Uh, does do any of the other three of you have a problem with a calendar that that assumes that we're going to meet on the first Monday of the month? No, everybody's good with the first Monday of the month. Okay, we set a meeting time at five p.m. normally, not today, obviously, but uh, for the future, based on uh, Council Rothenberg. Uh, yeah, Council Rothenberg's uh, uh, work schedule at, at five. Uh, so we set a meeting time at 5 p.m. So is that, uh, does that seem to work for everybody? 5 p.m. on the first Monday of yes. the month? No problem. Okay. Yep. Okay, so that schedule is what uh, Laura has provided us. Uh, obviously, if you know, as as we as we go through the two years, if there you know if there are conflicting events, um, then we'll you know this we're, we're flexible people, and we'll we'll deal with that. But I think for calendar purposes, you know, all of us have other commitments. It's good to uh, get that meeting date uh, uh, set so that you can plan on that from month to month. And uh, five o'clock works for everybody? Yep. Yes, that's a good time. Okay, so we'll plan then the first Monday of the month, 5 p.m. for our regular meetings through this term. Now, the other aspect of this is uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, how we wanna be meeting, uh, whether it's in person, hybrid, remote uh so i will um i will i'd like to hear from the other three of you about your preference particularly for the next let's say through the winter yes council labarge yes um being on the committee on city service which used to be like i said um unbelievable I really feel because of the way this committee is set up and because of people working, go home and have their children, we've always had our meetings by doing Zooming. And they were happy with that, where they didn't have to come into city council. And also, too, I feel now because of the rise of COVID and also of the flu going on, I think it's wise that we all stay safe and for our families. Thank you. Uh, others, uh, Councilors Dubs or uh, Rothenberg, have any thoughts on uh, format for meeting? 
Um, yeah, <clears throat> I would uh, just echo um, everything that Councilor Labarge just said. I, I think that um, I would prefer at least when in when it during times when COVID is rising and and also when in, when it's winter and the weather is bad, I would prefer on Zoom. So or I guess you know I would say at least hybrid. I would prefer, but but Zoom only I think is also a, a good idea. Thank you. Hello, I would say that while I typically request a hybrid so that my constituents who don't have internet can also attend, I think for our convenience, as this is more of a working group, the Zoom is fine, but I wonder if we could have a caveat that people might be allowed to submit public comment in writing that we could read um, just so that everyone has a fair opportunity to be heard if they can't have internet at the time of our meeting. Uh, yes, Council Labarge. I, I think that's uh, an excellent request. I don't have a problem with it because that is one of the barriers that we do have. And we worked on that very, very closely with city service. So I don't have a problem with that. I think it's great. Uh, I agree. So uh, we would uh, always take comment uh, in writing that would be directed uh, if if any of the members of the committee receive such comment please uh, or request uh, to submit written comment um, uh, you can reply affirmatively and then I would have it sent to uh, to Laura okay and then Laura will distribute it to us thank you do you e file at all with the I'm, I'm oh criminal cases can't do it that's what i thought so yeah Dave was just saying you weren't listed i was thinking i don't know that you actually use it uh yeah i i am listed um i mean like the appeals court oh and stuff like that like those things like do you want to be oh do you want to be added to our account <laughs> you file account should mute um, counselor no, elkin okay. i have i i think what's going on okay. Hot mic. Uh, I think that uh, <laughs> Councillor Elkins was uh, Zoom bombing us. Uh, <laughs> I think she got a phone call. <laughs> uh, so, hello. Hi. I was just here for the show. <laughs> I was just oh. here to see what was going on. Yes. Well, welcome, Councillor Elkins. Um, so, I, you know, I think we can reevaluate our, our, our meeting um, practice in, uh, in the spring and uh, for, I would say for through the winter that we will plan to meet uh, remotely on Zoom and uh, that any, if, if you have any uh, comments that are submitted in writing, please send them to Laura so that she can distribute them to, to all of us. Okay. Exactly. Councillor uh, Labarge. Right. Also, too, with the state, all counselors do have a rights to do Zooming up until the year of 2025 of March. If there's family problems, family illness, if for some reason there are like counselors might have children and they need to be home to do Zooming. That is all done through the state. Also too, even with our council meetings, the same way, every meeting. Plus the fact is that say like Jeremy Dubbs, and I have great concerns of what has happened recently with him being confined in his apartment for two and a half days. And I've gone a little further with that. And sometimes you can't be at a meeting because of personal issues. So it's not mandatory that you have to be there. Just wanted to let you know that. Thank you, Councillor. And even your city council meetings, right? When Jim Nash and I were talking, the president of city council has to be at every meeting, even if counselors are all are Zooming. One yes. person has to be there, and that's the council president. 
Yes. So that would make uh, our next meeting uh, on the first uh, Monday in February, which is February 5th uh, at, uh, at 5 p.m. Okay, and that will be remote and uh, remote only. And uh, I would say the March 4th meeting uh, will be remote only. And then we can reevaluate uh, our plan uh, at that time. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, Council LaBarge. Yes, also just a reminder, counselors usually have a month of July or August off if they were scheduled for a meeting, except for your city council meeting. Then you would go ahead and be not there at that meeting. And there's a little concerns here because I have noticed the past two years and previously we did have a choice of having a meeting not scheduled in the month of July or either August. So counselors, if they're going on vacation, whatever throughout that month, if the schedule only had like two appointments on it, you do that the next month. So I just wanted to bring that up also. Okay, thank you, Council LaBarge. Welcome. And if you can recall, Marissa, Councilor Marissa Elkins bringing it up about going on vacation and also being able to go on vacation with her family. You have yes. to do what you got to do. Uh, I concur that it is important to find a balance between our civic duty and family. So I, I uh, appreciate that. You're welcome. So uh, I want to I want to circle back now that uh, Councillor Rothenberg has joined us. To uh, we have three candidates for one for Parks and Recreation and two for the Arts Council that were referred to us, and uh, I was hoping. That Councillor Rothenberg, that you would uh, interview uh, Kit Pedraza, who is a candidate for uh, the Arts Council, who lives in your ward. I would be happy to. And um, we talked. We talked a bit before you joined us about um, receiving information. Uh, we have. Uh, we have the applicants, uh, the applications from each applicant um, that uh, were attached to uh, to this uh, meeting agenda. And um, in addition to that, uh, Laura has contacted the um, the uh, chairs and vice chairs of Parks and Recreation and the Arts Council. To uh, to provide comments about uh, the candidates that those will be available at the uh, at the February fifth meeting, and uh, we uh, we 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 are uh, now doing individual interviews with candidates uh, and try to try to match a committee member uh, either whose ward the candidate lives in or who has a particular interest in that board or commission uh, to do an interview with the candidates. And there are, there are um, uh, questions, standard questions that were developed in the last term. It's one of the recommendations of the, uh, uh, of the special committee on uh, barriers to service. And again, uh, Councilor Rothberg, I said that don't limit yourself to those questions, but that's a good starting point. So, um, uh, Councilor Labarge is going to interview David Ames. Councilor Dubs is going to interview Jennifer uh, Pollins, and you will interview Kit Pedraza sometime before the February fifth meeting. And you can do that by 
by phone, you can do that by Zoom, you can do that uh, in person if you if you wish, whatever is convenient for you and the candidate. And I think that's very important. We want to make this process as easy as possible for the candidates, because uh, as the Barriers uh, Committee pointed out in its report, which we'll discuss uh, more at the next meeting, um, the, uh, the process at times has been opaque and not very friendly to the, to the candidates. So we want to try to knock down those, knock down those walls. Okay. So if each of you could complete those interviews and have a report ready for the February 5th meeting, we can uh, then move on those uh, for the, uh, be the second meeting of the full council in, uh, uh, in February. I want to, I want to, accomplish this uh, in a in an as efficient manner as possible. I also want to give time for any any questions that are raised uh, during the the process uh, uh, by by us so that we're 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 taking this in a um, in a uh, both efficient and effective manner. Right. Councillor Barge. Yes, and also, too, which we talked about, our City Service Committee worked very hard on what the, our, our report had implemented, what we should do. And it's extremely important that we do get that total communication out there to residents and work with them very, very tirelessly to hear about why they want to be on committees and so forth. Yes. Uh, yes, as a retired journalist, I will say that communication, good communication, is essential. Uh, thank you for that, so well, Councillor Barge. Yes, Councillor Rothenberg. Um, did I miss anything about the auditor? You did not miss anything about the auditor. Now, the auditor is not on our agenda uh, today because there is a seven-day period uh, we can't we can't uh, consider a uh, a referral uh, for for a in this case it's a, sta a staff person within a seven day period of it being referred. That's why it is on. It will be scheduled for our February fifth meeting. Am I correct about that, Laura? That's correct. So. And there was no discussion of the auditor. It was referred last Thursday. That will appear on the uh, February 5th agenda. My expectation is that because that is a department head level staff position that we will actually do an in-person interview uh, uh, with the candidate at, at the February 5th meeting. Uh, yes. Um would it be possible to think about um, reaching our interview beyond just the applicant for such an important role, like perhaps to current staff members in the department or former staff members in the department? Uh, the department, what, which department? Um, with the auditor, just to get sort of almost like collaterals, uh, just about the job duty, about the current uh, role and who's got it at the training or any experience, just so we're getting a really complete kind of thorough dive into that role. I feel like the auditor is really, really, really important. Uh, okay, uh, I see uh, Council Labarge. Yes, and we know for a fact that appointment is through the mayor's office and I think what I'm hearing from Corbyn, you're asking about getting some input from the employees working in that office, correct? Yes. I don't have a problem with that. And maybe not, maybe not identified by name so that no one feels uncomfortable, but just so we can have a better sense of city services. Uh, well, I will, I mean, That's these are- mayor. Yes. I was just about to say that, Council Labarge. Thank you. I will check with the mayor. Uh, Laura, did you have your yeah. hand up? I was just going to say that Finance Director Nardi has already reached out to try to confirm the date and time of that interview. And 
So my assumption is that she's going to accompany, normally the mayor introduces department heads, but I thought for, it might be the director Nardi is going to come with her and would have some, you know, would be able to talk about the auditor's office, of course, but it's duties. Um, I, uh, I've seen that correspondence to confirm uh, the date on which uh, the, the candidate would be Con, uh, considered by city services. Um, and I, so I do expect uh, Director Nardi to be at that meeting. I will also inquire of the mayor um, to see if she will attend that meeting as well. Okay. Uh, any other? Oh, okay. We also want to. Uh, 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 so we're we're set on uh, meeting dates. We're set on uh, remote meetings uh, at least through the winter, and we'll take that we'll take that up again uh, probably at the April meeting. Uh, and uh, I think that completes our agenda uh, our, for today. Is there any new business? Yes, Council LaBarge. I was just going to question Ward 3, Councilor Corbelay. When you were <coughs> stating, which I've heard you say a couple of times here, that you do have residents who do not have the internet, are you looking at Walter Salvo's, like the McDonald House and so forth, I was wondering, it's just, I'm just thinking of in the community room, and I've been there many times, which one is larger? Is it Walter Salvo's, I think so, versus the McDonald House? Yes, Walter Salvo. Right. If there was possibility of setting up a room like they have at the senior center where people are taught how to use the internet and so forth. That is something to look at. Also where they could go to the senior center with the computers there. But maybe it's something we can look at with talking with IT on this of how we accommodate these people that are living in Walter Salvos and the McDonald House and the Fruit Street apartments and so forth. It's the same way up in Florence too. That's a great idea. I think the good news for the Salvo House is that the one of the groups did get, I believe, an ARPA grant, and they are going to be equipping that community room with internet if they haven't already. But we could certainly do a survey of the other houses and work with Kara and um, see if there's anything we can do. I think even Director Mish was interested yeah. in trying to help with that too, however we can. Maybe yeah. Representative Sabadosa, that would be great. Really and fun. the Forbes Library, they have those little hot spots. So that'd be a great exactly. project. And plus, we need to look even at Forbes Library, people with disabilities. You know, so we got these large community rooms, and we all know for a fact people would really learn, want to learn how to go ahead and get on the internet. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you yes. for your concern, Councillor Labarge. I appreciate You're it. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. And my congratulations to whomever is our chair and vice chair. Thank you. You, you are you are uh, you are uh, looking at. Uh, 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 I am serving as chair, and uh, Councillor Labarge is serving as vice chair. So. Excellent. Uh, We're, and I'm so glad. This is a wonderful council. I'm really glad to be serving with you all. Thank well, you. I I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, that concludes business on the agenda. Is there any new business? Nope, Anything I'm, else that people want to talk about today? Yes, Council LaBarge. I want to say, I think we have a very good group here. And I think we're all going to put our heads together. We're going to move forward and do what is right and go in the right direction. I, I think that is a very, very well said, Councillor Barge. That is a terrific goal for us to keep in mind. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay, well, I know that both uh, Councillor Rothenberg and Councillor Dubbs have a, another meeting coming up. Uh, this will give you a, a bit of a break between meetings, so I think uh, a motion to adjourn is in order. Motion to adjourn. Second. Right. Okay, uh, Laura. Councillor Moulton. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Dubbs. Yes. And Councillor Rothenberg. Indeed, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you all. Right. all.